I am so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be with me because I know everybody's real busy, so I do appreciate you spending a little time, and hopefully I'm going to make it worth your while because that's my goal, of course, is to make your time worthwhile so that you listen to all my shows. If this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. I'm board certified in chiropractic, board certified in orthopedics, uh, board certified in pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author, and this and all my radio shows are heard coast to coast and around the world. So we're going to talk today about how to naturally detoxify your body. Now, the way we came up with this topic, because every week we try to come up with a new topic for you, the way we came up with this topic was I was getting my hair cut. And the people at the hair salon, they, they knew who I was, and they were saying, oh, Dr. Joe, what's your next show topic going to be? And I said, well, it's going to be on detoxifying your body. And they said, wow, that's really exciting. And I said, it's really important for people like you and they said, what do you mean? Oh, I eat well. You know, everybody defends themselves. It's always funny how people defend themselves. And I said, no, you're surrounded by so many chemicals all day, every day. Hair dyes and curling agents and toxic chemicals, even hair, little bits of a skin are getting in the air. You're inhaling these things. So it's really important for someone like you to detox. And one person said, I never thought of it like that before. Because when you think about detoxifying the body, most people think about what they eat. And they say, well, I'm going to eat junk food. I, you know, if I drink alcohol, of course, that's a toxin. If I eat sugar, that's a toxin. But there's also environmental toxins. And you put these chemicals in your body, and your liver is the main organ that tries to break them down and essentially neutralize them so that they don't do more damage. So many times your liver has to go through this multiple-step process to detoxify a chemical in your system, and you may not be doing that. And so I want you to understand that you need to start doing those things to get the body cleansed. So if you think about uh, what you're putting in your body every day, you don't have to cleanse on a periodic uh, event. You want to make it a daily event because this is what people come to me too. They'll say, well, Dr. Joe, I want to do a liver cleanse. I want to do a colon detox. Well, that's all well and good, but you want to really make it a lifestyle and not just something you do periodically. And I think about something called the Daniel Fast. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Uh, it's it's a, a Christian thing. And some churches around, all around, will do something, usually beginning of the year, and they do something called the Daniel Fast. And if you ever read uh, the story of Daniel, he, was, uh, he chose to not eat the food of the kings. He decided to eat, essentially, the food of the paupers. He wanted to eat what equates to what we can gather, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, everything I've been telling you to eat for the past 40 years. And he was, him and his men were much stronger, and they fought better, and they were greater warriors. And so some churches say, well, let's do a Daniel fast. And so they'll eat good foods for a couple of weeks, and everyone who does this that I've ever spoken to says, Dr. Joe, I do the Daniel fast with my church once a year, and I feel great. Every time I do it, I just feel wonderful. And then, of course, my question is, well, why don't you do it all the time? And they always look at me like, I never thought about that before. I don't have to just do it periodically. Exactly right. So we're going to talk about foods and other things you need to do to cleanse yourself. But the foods we're going to discuss are going to give your liver a helping hand so that it works at peak efficiency so that you can clean yourself up from the inside out. And if we have time, we'll talk about from the outside in, different types of soaps to use, different types of shampoos to use, different types of toothpaste to use. I'm not sure we'll have time for that because we have a lot to cover today. So I'm just going to give you a list of foods. And a lot of times, if you listen to my shows, I talk about negative things. Today, we're going to talk about positive things. We're going to talk about the things you can do. And it's all fun. It's all inexpensive. And you're going to love it. So the first food is apples. There's a fiber called pectin that helps detoxify heavy metals and food additives that accumulate in your body over the years. So you've heard the expression, apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, it does. And there's rationale behind it because of this one type of fiber called pectin. Now, when it comes to fiber, it, you think about fiber and your bowel function, your colon is a tube, but it's a muscle. And when the colon expands, it has something in it called stretch receptors. And the stretch receptors expand to the point where they say, okay, I can't expand anymore. I'm going to start to contract. And that's what moves food along your digestive system. It's called peristalsis. So you have stretch receptors and peristalsis moving everything along. Well, if you don't eat enough fiber and you're eating things like meats and dairy products, which have essentially zero fiber, it doesn't quite stretch the colon like it's supposed to. And also the fiber acts like a brush. I mean, you could eat enough meat to stretch your colon, of course, but it acts like a brush and it cleans the colon as it goes through. 
So there's different types of fiber. There's soluble fiber, which means it dissolves. And soluble fiber might be something from oatmeal. That's a good example. Slimy, if you ever ate okra, okra can be slimy. So soluble fiber is important because it's like the blob, if you're old enough to remember the movie The Blob. And it just wraps around things and carries the toxins out of your body. This is a key when it comes to cholesterol lowering. Because your body produces cholesterol, puts it into bile, bile squirts into your small intestine to help digest fat. And if you don't push it out of your colon, that cholesterol and other toxins can get reabsorbed. The bile wraps around the, uh, not the bile, the, the, the fiber wraps around thing, the soluble fiber like the blob and just catches onto it and carries it out. So pectin can help bind to things like heavy metals, mercury, aluminum, and these things are toxic to the nervous system. Now, as a chiropractor, my concern is making sure that your nervous system is working the best it possibly can all the time from a chemical standpoint as well as a physical standpoint. And this is why chiropractic has grown through, even through hard years when there was a time with the med no kidding, I don't know if you knew about this, the American Medical Association had a mission. This is, gosh, 35, 40 years, maybe 35 years ago it was exposed. Their job was to contain and eliminate chiropractic care from the world because it was competition for medicine. Well, there was a, a Dr. Uh, Wilkes, he sued the AMA and he sued a couple other medical groups and he won. Because people came forward and they said, yeah, you're right. We have these documents. We were told to put chiropractors out of business to talk bad about them. And Dr. Wilkes won this settlement against the American Medical Association, the American Board of Surgeons, I think it was. I'm not sure if that was it, so don't quote me on that. But a couple of other groups. And when the settlement came down, Dr. Wilkes said, I want $1 for my settlement victory. That's all he wanted. Because I remember being in school and even donating as a student to the, the legal fund for this. And so there was a time where anything was holistic, nutrition, supplements, chiropractic, uh, nurse practitioners even uh, were, technically were banned from this because medical doctors were only allowed to talk to people that could prescribe drugs. Now, nurse practitioners were able to, are able to prescribe drugs. I should have said nurses, not nurse practitioners. I take that back. Nurses who couldn't prescribe drugs, technically, they weren't even allowed to associate with them, to talk to them. That's how intense it was trying to put the holistic world out of business. Well, we won, and that, of course, has changed tremendously since then. But I, I go back to fiber now. I don't know how I got from that to fiber. But pectin helps bind to heavy metals, and heavy metals affect the nervous system. So I want to make sure your nervous system is working the best it can. Now, if you're going to eat apples, I'm, I'm good with that. But I want to make sure that you're eating only organic apples. And the reason is this. Apples many times are sprayed with pesticides and chemicals. They're not washed. Many times they're not washed. I shouldn't say never. I'm sure sometimes they are. But many times the pesticides are still on the apple, even if they're just rinsed off. And then the apple is dipped in wax. And the wax seals the pesticides in. That's why you see these shiny apples. Many times they're waxed. And if you don't believe me, buy a commercial apple that's all shiny and just put it in, in hot water. And you'll see the matte wax melt and float to the top of the water. You'll be amazed how much wax there is. And the wax is there just to make it look pretty and preserve it. But it has no health benefits and can actually be detrimental. So if you're going to eat apples, I recommend organic only because they don't use pesticides on it. See how easy that was? And it's also higher in nutrients. And personally, I think they taste a lot better too. So apples are good. Make sure they're organic. Try to eat them raw if you can. Don't eat too many because they, they aren't high in sugar. Never, ever drink apple juice because apple juice is loaded with fructose. Fructose is a sugar. And fructose has to be converted into glucose, and that conversion occurs in your liver. And when that occurs, the body produces uric acid when fructose is converting into glucose. And uric acid gets in your joints, and it hurts. So as a chiropractor... I want to make sure that you have less pain, not more pain. So when patients come in our offices, we like to work on their spine to see if they have pinched nerves or muscle spasms or bulging discs. Sometimes we can help those depending how bad it is. But we also want to approach it from a nutritional standpoint because we want to get the person healthy from all angles. So stay away from fructose, high fructose corn syrup, and that goes for fruit juices. The apple has fiber, which pushes the sugar through your colon and gives you a slow release of sugar. If you're eating uh, fruit juice, boom, all the sugar gets absorbed at once. We don't want that. All right, let's continue on. Artichokes. Artichokes naturally increase bile production, and they're loaded with vitamin C, vitamin K, antioxidants, and about 10 grams of fiber in each average size artichoke. 
So if you haven't hopped on board the artichoke train yet, I want you to. Now let me tell you about artichokes. I'm Italian. I'm a little biased here. My grandmother and grandfather taught my father, who taught me, how to make the best artichokes in the world. Because I've been to restaurants, and I'll order an artichoke, and they're expensive as heck, because they take a long time to cook. And I've had them, and I thought, this isn't even close to how good my father's artichokes are. Now, of course, mine. So if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, my first book I wrote, it's called Eating Right for the Health of It. And I have a bunch of recipes in that book. And one of them is my artichoke recipe. And it is just off the chart. So if you like artichokes, which I love artichokes, that's the best recipe in the world. There's no reason to do anything else. It's there for you. Uh, So artichokes are loaded with fiber. They stimulate bile. Now, why is that important? Bile is, is essentially a waste product that's being recycled. Your liver, remember liver, breaks down all the junk and creates something called bile. Bile is stored in your gallbladder. Hopefully you still have one. And the gallbladder squirts this bile into your small intestine when you eat a lot of fat. So it's dish detergent, for lack of a better word. So it dissolves your fat. And if you don't have a gallbladder, another story, I guess, you really need to meet with me so we can put together a protocol for how you should be eating. Because if you have your gallbladder removed, you also increase your risk of heart disease because you're not digesting your fats properly. Or normally, I should say. So gallbladder stores bile, bile squirts out, digests fat, and it, and then it passes out, it gets absorbed and then passes out of your body. Artichokes stimulate the production of bile, which then stimulates the liver's detoxification because the liver has to make more bile. And where does it get it from? Breaking down junk and other things. But it's a good way to clean out your liver. Asparagus is great. For some reason, last week, I was just exposed to so much asparagus. I went to a really fancy dinner at a fancy restaurant, and uh, it was a, a lecture, and I, was a guest, I wasn't speaking. I was attending, and I said, well, I don't eat meat. It was at a steakhouse. I said, can I just have a vegetable plate? And they had artichokes, and then somebody I know brought me artichokes. And the, uh, oh, artichokes, I'm sorry, asparagus. So it was asparagus at the, at the restaurant, asparagus at, at somebody brought me. I had bought asparagus because they were on sale, so I just bombarded with asparagus. But it really is one of the best stress-reducing foods, and well, I shouldn't tell you this. It's one of the foods I recommend if you have a hangover. Now, I, you know, I've, I've, I did a lecture. I put together a lecture on how to beat a hangover, and I've never given it. And the reason I've never given it is because I'm afraid I'm going to give you permission to go out and get drunk, and I don't think you should do that. But anyway, asparagus is good for hangovers. It's also a natural diuretic, which makes you pee, which then helps the detoxification process. Once again, if you've never had really good asparagus, I'm in my book, Eating Right for the Health of It, I have an amazing recipe for a roasted asparagus, so easy. Take the asparagus, clean them, break the bottoms off, wash them. Um, Olive oil, salt, and pepper, put it under the broiler. Mix it up, put it under the broiler. When they just get a little, uh, start to brown a little bit, off the chart. You'll you'll never eat asparagus any other way again. So asparagus, artichokes, I'm kind of going A to Z here. uh, All the good foods that help detoxify your body. Because you're putting toxins in by eating what we call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, hair top, hair chemicals, uh, shampoos, conditioners, perfumes, hairsprays, deodorants, uh, new car smell, carpet cleaners, soap that you use on your clothes. These are all chemicals that when they get into the body have to be broken down to keep you alive. If they're not broken down, it can kill you. Avocados. Boy kind of cool avocados they've been cool to me for years but now suddenly they're they're advertising about them it's it's a new hip food but avocados are a good fat they're actually a fruit not a vegetable and they really help you detoxify because you need these good fats most of us eat bad fats all day every day hydrogenated oils peanut oil uh, cottonseed cottonseed oil why would you eat you don't eat cottonseed why would you eat cottonseed oil Uh, corn oils, vegetable oils, these are high in omega-6 fatty acids. And omega-6 fatty acids increase inflammation. I'm your chiropractor. I want to reduce your inflammation, not increase your inflammation. So the omega-6 fatty acids uh, increase inflammation. Avocados have good fats in them, which can actually help decrease inflammation. They also contain something called glutathione. Now, if you've never heard the word glutathione, you need to. Glutathione is, a, is, is the superstar antioxidant, and that helps detoxify a lot of synthetic chemicals and get them out of your system. So glutathione is huge, and most of us don't have it. We make it, but we don't make enough of it. So avocados is a great source of glutathione. 
It's another big word there. But glutathione is the thing that really helps your liver. And most of us don't get enough of it. In fact, there's even supplements you can take that are glutathione. You can take a supplement called N-acetylcysteine. It's called NAC. That helps build glutathione. And again, supplements sometimes can be a little, little confusing. And I try to keep it as simple as possible for you. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. These are two products. I created them years ago for myself. And I consider them the absolute minimum nutrients that you should be taking every single day. Along with a good diet, minimum things you should take is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. I take a scoop of each. I mix them with like coconut milk or almond milk because I don't do dairy. I drink it every day. You can make a smoothie out of it. Throw a frozen banana, some frozen berries in there. Um, you can drink it with water. It's not as much fun with water. I like it with coconut milk or almond milk, unsweetened, of course. And once you start taking, in fact, literally, I just got a text before I came on the air from my friend Becky, and she is out of town uh, working, and she said, I've been sharing your Super Greens and Essential Source with some of the people I work with, and they're saying that since they've been taking it, they're not getting sick. And I hear that all the time. It really helps the immune system. Just tremendous. It's raw fruits and vegetables in a powder form and antioxidants and enzymes. And so the, if you want more information, they're on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. We come up first. And you can see information about those and other supplements, my books. I archive radio shows on the website. It's there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's my gift to you. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to have the opportunity to be your doctors. Now, when you come to our offices, we have a team of doctors that will work with you. You can go to my website to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. You can make the appointment online. You can call us. We accept people with, we accept people with insurance, without insurance, car accidents, sports injuries. I say this every show, and every show somebody comes in and says, I heard you say this. If you've ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. So you really need to consider that whether the accident was yesterday or 50 years ago. If the car was damaged, you were damaged. You're not stronger than your car. And spinal damage will eventually deteriorate, lead to arthritis, and cause more problems. So whatever your problem is, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, acid reflux, hopefully we can help you. The website, again, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. We'll get you an appointment. Do it today. Stop suffering needlessly. Do it today because you'll regret it if you don't. So I want to keep talking about foods that help you detoxify. Basil is a good food to help you detoxify. Now, I'm Italian. Of course, basil is everywhere in my life. Uh, it's an herb. It helps metabolic breakdown and elimination of chemicals in the blood. Now, you can put it in salads. You can put it on top of things uh, like pizzas, which you shouldn't be eating pizza anyway, but I said it anyway. But my favorite way to eat basil is making a pesto. Years ago, when I gave up all animal products, what, 30 plus years ago, I said, I want to find a pesto that doesn't have dairy in it. And every recipe and every place I went to the grocery stores, it all had cheese in it. So I said, what if I made pesto and didn't put cheese in it? And I did everything the recipe said. It was, uh, you know, artich uh, not artichokes, basil and pine nuts and olive oil and garlic and salt and pepper, lemon juice. It tastes great. So if you want to make a good pesto, it's in my book. Once again, eating right for the health of it. I'm going to old, old school here. That was my first book I ever wrote. Great pesto recipes in there. If you want to make your own, go online, look it up. Just leave the cheese out. You'll never know it wasn't there. I promise you. So pesto is great. Beets are very good to help detoxify the body. Now, this red vegetable contains a mix of something called phytochemicals and minerals, and that helps make the blood, uh, it helps purify the blood and cleanse the liver. Now, they're one of the best foods for athletic performance, but also for romantic performance and also for just life performance because beets have in it something called nitrates. And nitrates, when they mix with your saliva, create something called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. It increases circulation to your arms, your legs, your reproductive organs, family show, keeping it clean here, your liver, your brain, pretty good stuff. Now, you can do beets, which are great. Uh, just a little warning, if you eat beets, next time you uh, your bowels move, it'll come out very red. And people have called me up and said, oh my God, I'm bleeding. And, no, you're not. You ate beets. So just FYI. But the beets, the nitrates, convert into nitric oxide, which helps increase circulation throughout the body, which is good stuff. I prefer to do beet powder. I love the taste of beets, but there's also sugar in there. 
So I try to cut out as much sugar as I can from my diet. So if you're going to do night uh, beet powder, make sure it's organic. It's going to give you all the nitrates without the sugar. And so here's a little secret I do. I take a beet powder and mix it in with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. And now we have this super duper, uh, we, we supercharge the Super Greens and the Essential Source. So that's just a little trick for you. Uh, whether you need to increase your performance in any aspect of your life, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, uh, you can uh, get the, add a little beet powder to it. Not a lot. You've got you add a half a teaspoon maybe, but make sure it's organic. So we're talking today about foods that you can eat to detoxify your body, get the junk out of your system. Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts are packed with selenium, and that's good for flushing mercury out of your system. So here's the thing. Most of us are exposed to mercury on a regular basis. Now, where might we get mercury from? Well, you can get it from car exhaust. When gas, gasoline is burned, it has mercury, and mercury can get in the air, so you can get it that way. How about vaccines? A lot of vaccines have something in it called an adju a mul multiple adjuvants. An adjuvant is something they add to the vaccine to make your immune system stimulated. So you put mercury or aluminum in the vaccine, and the immune system kicks in and says, I'm going to attack this, this foreign body. So the immune system kicks in, and it stimulates your immune system. The problem with adjuvants is the immune system can never break them down. If it's a virus, a germ, a bacteria, a fungus, the immune system attacks it and kills it. Well, the immune system is trying to attack this piece of metal, and it's not getting anywhere, so it just produces more more, antib more antibodies, but more white blood cells to, to attack it. And eventually, the immune system can burn out. And your immune system only has so many warriors, so many soldiers. And if you have mercury and aluminum in your body and other heavy metals, the immune system is busy fighting these guys off. Now, suddenly, a virus comes along, a germ, a bacteria, and you're spreading your troops pretty thin. So that's why I'm not a big fan of people having aluminum in their body or mercury. And that's one of the downsides of vaccines is they have it there. So another place you can get mercury from is fish. Now, I don't eat animal products. I don't eat fish. But in the past, I don't know, several decades, the amount of mercury in our fish has skyrocketed. In fact, in California, if you buy a can of tuna fish, it says it has a warning on it for pregnant women because of the mercury. Now, if it's not safe for pregnant women and babies, it's not safe for you either, in my opinion. So I'm a big fan of getting mercury out of the system. And what we do in our office is we do something called a hair analysis. We take a little bit of your hair, and we send it out to a lab, and we can test to see if you have heavy metals like mercury and aluminum in your body. And if you do, then we got to get you on a real heavy, hardcore metal detox program to get it out of your system. Now, Brazil nuts are also loaded with good things like good sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium, and that works wonders on your blood pressure and your heart health. And for men, selenium is important for the prostate gland. So it helps the immune system. It helps your blood pressure. Uh, it tastes good. And now you don't need a whole lot of Brazil nuts, maybe one or two a day. I say two a day. Uh, that's really all you need. But it's important because today we're talking about detoxifying the body. And so Brazil nuts are a good thing you could use to help uh, get the mercury and the heavy metals out of the system because these heavy metals are just... <sighs> the more testing I do with my patients, I can't remember the last time I tested a patient who didn't have excessive heavy metals in their body. And it can get into the brain and essentially short-circuit the brain. Now, again, as a chiropractor, I worry that the brain and the nervous system isn't working at 100%. And if you're putting things like fish in your body every day loaded with mercury you're kind of fighting what I'm doing, but you're also adversely affecting your health long-term. So I want to get you well short-term and long-term from a chemical standpoint, from a spinal standpoint, a neurological standpoint, and a digestive problem, a digestive standpoint. So if you have acid reflux or heartburn, many times we can adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm physically to get it to come out of spasm so that it stops the reflux. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we will set you up a time to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And one of my doctors asked me the other day, I was doing another show, and she texted me, and she said, ask the people who have been listening to you for years and reading your books and following you online. Oh, by the way, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. We send out a lot of good information, like free lectures that I'm giving, specials that we're running. So please follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And 
She said, all these people come in and say, why, why didn't I do this sooner? And the answer is, I don't know. So go to my website, drjoesposito.com, book the appointment online, call us to make an appointment. We accept people with all insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. We want to be your doctors. Folks, got to go to a break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. What we're talking about today are foods that help you detoxify. And the main organ that we talk about with detoxification is the liver. Everything you eat, everything you drink, everything you breathe, eventually is going to end up in your liver. Well, not everything you breathe. Sometimes you exhale. But things are going to end up in your liver to be broken down. And, and the liver is kind of like a, a sorting station. It says, okay, these are amino acids. These are proteins. These are fats. These are carbohydrates. And it kind of breaks them down into usable forms and then sends it out into the body. And so the liver, the good news about the liver is no, no organ heals faster than the liver. Because people say, come to me sometimes and say, you know, Dr. Joe, I have a liver condition. I said, well, the good news is if you had to have an organ, have a problem, the liver's a good one because it usually heals. Not always, but usually. So the one thing with the liver is as soon as you stop putting the junk in, the junk starts to come out. So you, you have control over the liver by not poisoning it. And you can do things to help the liver heal faster. And that's what we're talking about today. So one of the foods you can do, broccoli. Not only does broccoli increase something called glutathione, and glutathione is, is it helps detoxify the body. It's a great antioxidant. It helps the liver transform toxins into a form that can be eliminated. Now, science has linked cruciferous vegetables with living longer. Now, what the heck is a cruciferous vegetable? Well, if you listened to my shows before, you know my little secret about cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables... Uh, when the flowers form on the plant, they're in the shape of a crucifix. That's why they're called cruciferous. Pretty cool, huh? And when you start eating cruciferous vegetables, they're loaded with sulfur. I'm going to talk about Brussels sprouts and cabbage in just a second. Uh, these things help the body heal. It helps your joints heal. You need sulfur to repair cartilage and ligaments. And most of us don't get enough good sulfur in our diet. Cruciferous vegetables solve that problem. Here's a little thing I do because I'm lazy. I'll, I'll buy bags of frozen broccoli. I'll buy bags of frozen vegetables. I like uh, okra. I'll buy bags of frozen okra. But broccoli is an easy one. Take a bag of broccoli, tear it open, heat it up. I just boil it in some water. And then I'll add, once it's boiled, I drain it. I'll add some olive oil, some salt, some pepper, some red pepper. Uh, you can add garlic salt or garlic powder if you wanted to. And I add something called nutritional yeast. Now, if you've never had nutritional yeast, I want you to consider this as an adventure for you. Nutritional yeast is a powder. It kind of looks like powdered mashed potatoes. It has an amazingly delicious flavor. It tastes very savory, uh, kind of like cheese, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, like a cheddar cheese almost. It's even yellow. And I just sprinkle on liberally the nutritional yeast, salt, pepper, olive oil, garlic salt, red pepper if I want to, oregano if I want to get crazy, Oregano is really good as an antiviral. Mix it all together, and I made essentially what becomes a casserole, and then I just eat it. So a bag of organic broccoli florets might cost you buck, buck fifty if you get them on sale. Olive oil, relatively inexpensive. Make sure you do organic. Salt and pepper is pretty cheap. Oregano is pretty cheap, or any type of Italian seasoning, marjoram, oregano. Uh, and then the, the, the nutritional yeast is, is the thing that's going to make it kind of rich and, and, and cheesy. You eat that, you'll be full. You'll feel great, low calories, extremely low carb. I mean, you're worried about carbs. This is a great way to get low carbs. So you're saving money. You're saving time. It tastes great. You feel good. It helps your organs. It helps detoxify the liver. gives you glutathione. gives you fiber. Where's the downside to this? There is none. So Brussels uh, broccoli is one of my little tricks that I do as one of my go-to meals. And it's frozen. So you don't have to worry about it. It's not like, oh, do I have it fresh? Did it go bad? Do I have to clean it? Do I have to wash it? It's washed and cut up and frozen. Just always do organic of anything, of course. So that's kind of fun. Brussels sprouts. This is another one of my go-to foods. Brussels sprouts are high in sulfur, so they help break down toxins in the blood. Brussels sprouts are high in something called indole 3 carbonyl sulforaphane, and antioxidants, and those have been proven to help fight cancer. So wait a minute. We have a food that's relatively inexpensive, $2 a bag maybe, do organic. They help fight cancer. They're low in carbs, zero carbs as far as maybe one or two. I don't even know if there's any at all. 
Olive oil is great for lubricate the joints, gives you omega-9 fatty acids. It's good for you. Nutritional yeast loaded with B vitamins that you can add to the broccoli. You can add it to the Brussels sprouts. I'm going to give you a different recipe for Brussels sprouts, though. Air-dried sea salt, which is going to give you over 70 different minerals to help the body work. Pepper, which is high in pepperine, which is very good to help you absorb nutrients. Um, so you can do that as well. Red pepper loaded with nutrients opens up the blood vessels. But with Brussels sprouts, you can mix it like I told you with the broccoli or a little trick I do. Take the bag of frozen Brussels sprouts, dump it in a like a, fro- a pie pan, a, a glass pie pan. Olive oil, salt and pepper. Balsamic vinegar. Put a little balsamic vinegar on top, mix it up, put it in a broiler. Takes about 20 minutes. And when they start getting a little brown, depending how you like it, you know, taste one if you want it cooked a little more, put it back in a little bit. Unbelievably delicious. In fact, I brought them to the office many times for my doctors, and they're like, oh my God, these are great. Where did you get them from? I said, get them from? I got a $2 bag of Brussels sprouts with some olive oil and some organic balsamic vinegar. People go nuts over them. Cheap, delicious, gourmet, if you want to get fancy. Again, you want to get a little more crazy, add a little garlic powder to it. Ooh. So these are things that are very good to help cleanse and detoxify the body, because that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about ways that you can cleanse and detoxify your body, but they're all cheap, they're all easy, and they're all fun. And so many times... People come to me and say, Dr. Joe, I don't know what to eat. I understand I shouldn't be eating alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas. But what do I eat then? Well, if here's a little tip for you and a free tip. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and you'll see a link there to sign up for my newsletter. Just give me your email address. It's absolutely free. Never give your email address out. And we don't send out a lot of stuff. We send out nice little tips, kind of like the radio show, just little tips on what you can do to get well, when I'm giving a lecture again. Many times they're free. A lot of companies hire me to come in and do corporate workshops, and those I can't invite you to, but the public ones I invite you to, and I lecture all over the country. And when you do that, we're going to send you a link to a lecture that I did called So What Can I Eat? And that's going to be there as well. Again, that's free. It's all no charge. It's my gift to you. But when people say what to eat, here's some things. Cabbage, a lot like Brussels sprouts, cabbage contains sulfur and it stimulates the activation of liver detoxifying enzymes. Now, if you don't know how to eat cabbage, there's several ways you can do it. How about a coleslaw? (gasps) Coleslaw? I could do that. How about a cooked cabbage? Oh, I've seen that already on menus. Take a cabbage, cut it up. I put olive oil. I'm Italian. Everything starts with oil, garlic, and uh, red pepper. Uh, You could do coconut oil, too, which heats a little better, but you're not going to heat this for very long, so you're okay with this. Olive oil, put the cabbage in, cover it about a third of the way with water, mix it up, cover it. It'll steam, it'll get the oily flavor, the peppery, the garlicky flavor. There's your meal right there. You want to get really crazy? Add some cannellini beans. They're Italian. And mix a can of beans in. Don't cook the cabbage with the beans. The beans break down, it gives you a lot of gas. Take the can of beans, make sure they're organic, open it up, dump the can in the cabbage after it's cooked, mix it up. You'll lose your mind how good this stuff is. Now, I grew up in a real poor family. My father was disabled. My father had a horrible accident before I was born, fell off a ladder, broke his back, fractured his skull, and went deaf. So my mother was pregnant with me. It's the first chapter of my new book, actually, which is really kind of, it's a neat little story, but it kind of tells you where I came from. And I never had a father I could hear. My father passed about 13 years ago, but he never heard my voice. But I learned so much from him. We were poor. We didn't, we didn't go out. We went to dinner maybe once a year, if that. But he taught me how to be humble, how to be uh, frugal. Uh, but what a great man. I, I just can't praise my father enough. Just, just a great man. And my mother as equally as great. I'm just so lucky to have such amazing parents. And growing up in a very tumultuous time with no money, um, growing up in the 60s, kind of a you know, politically tumultuous time. But I learned so much from them. And my father loved to cook. So that's where I learned a lot of these recipes. And a lot of the foods that we're talking about were part of my daily diet. I didn't know they were good for me. I just knew they were cheap. And that's why we ate them. But turns out now, science is proving that these things are really good for you as well. So the cabbage and beans, by the way, is where I was going with this. is just uh, off the chart. Um, So you want to eat more fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. The alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you want to stay away from them. And these things like the cabbage, you can make the cabbage and beans and freeze it. And I do this a lot. And then if I just, it's winter, I'm busy, I'm I'm, at these more winter foods. I'll just take out something before I go to work, put it in the refrigerator. When I come home from work, it's defrosted. I heat it up, I eat it, and I'm done. Quick, easy, inexpensive, delicious, no downside, folks. 
all upsides and I'm actually helping my joints because the sulfur can help build my joints. And as we get older, we all start to suffer from joint problems because the joints start to wear out and they dehydrate. Because when you're young, you got really good circulation to your ligaments, your discs, and the body heals so much quicker. As we get older, the circulation starts to fade and the discs and the ligaments literally dry up. And so they become weak and brittle by eating foods that increase circulation, like beets, like hot peppers. You're allowing blood to go to these areas and allowing those areas to heal. So a lot of the ethnic foods that you like so much, Mexican food and Italian food, are the cheap foods. It's the foods of the paupers. But there's a lot of nutrients in there as well. We live in a country of rich people diseases. We have diseases of excess, too much, too much sugar, too much alcohol, too much food in general, too much cooked food. We really want to go back to the, it's like the old man, go back to the old ways when we didn't have as much. You know, it's interesting. I was watching a show called That 70s Show. Everybody in the show was thin except one guy, and he had a little bit of a belly. And I thought to myself, it's a modern-day show. When they uh, casted this, they had to look for people that were thin, that didn't look like we look like today, because in the 70s, we didn't have a lot of the steroids and hormones and chemicals and pesticides and herbicides and genetically modified foods. And in the 80s, that all came about. Look at your, if you're old enough, look at your high school pictures and look at the football team, how small they were. Look at how thin everybody was. And now look at football players. I weighed 100 and, uh, 210 pounds in high school, the biggest guy on my football team. Six foot one, 210 pounds. Now, that's a kicker. That's nothing. I look at kids and they're so much taller, so much bigger because they're being exposed to so many chemicals. And I attended a seminar the other day. And it was on weight loss and detoxification. It wasn't my seminar. I was, I was, a, I was a, a attendee. And the doctor made an interesting point, And she said, nobody talks about this, but we have a lot more uh, androgynous people in our society, people that are not sure of their sexuality. Now, not a statement on that, but why are we suddenly seeing this upsurge? Is it because more people are making it more public? Or is it because we're exposing ourselves to so many different chemicals that alter our hormones. I believe it's the latter. And when you expose yourself to these chemicals, it can alter your hormones and alter your, your sexuality. And the liver is where a lot of these chemicals get broken down, and the liver can only do so much work. And when you overburden it and don't give it the nutrients to heal, it can become a problem. It's a theory. I have no proof of that statement. It's just an observation I've made. But the liver is always working. And if you don't give your body the nutrients that it needs to heal, it can't. As a chiropractor, when patients come see us, I say, listen, we're going to give you chiropractic care. We're also going to do nutritional workup on you because your body needs nutrients to heal. And if we give you the best chiropractic care in the world, or wherever you go, you get the best chiropractic or medical care or whatever, the best workout in the world. If you're not giving the body the raw materials to regenerate the damaged ligaments and muscles and discs, you're working out or spending your money not as efficiently as you can. Yeah, it's great, but it's not going to give you all the benefits that you want. So that's why it's so important. That's why I say at least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. The minimum amount of nutrients you should take every day. I take that at least once a day. If I'm going hiking, if I'm going on a date, if I have a big lecture coming up, I'll take it twice a day, even three times a day when I'm sick, just give myself all the nutrients it needs. But do that at least. And if you don't know what they are, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, and we have it's under store, I think it is. Look under products. and you'll, I have other products too, cold and flu tonic, an immune booster. Um, what else? It's got a, a colon cleanser. If your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, yes, a day. You need to be taking something to stimulate those bowels. We have Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser. My books are there, Eating Right for the Health of It, Prescription for Extreme Health. A lot of good information. And I archive my radio shows. So when you hear a show that you like, you can take it now and send it to your friends and say, hey, listen, this is the show I was telling you about. Listen to this show. It pertains to you. We videotape my live lectures. We videotape little tidbits as well. I try to videotape something, if we can, every day, just a little tidbit to send it out to the world on how to sit, how to sleep, what to eat, uh, how your shoulder can come out of place, things you can do to get well. So I really want, I want this to become a tutorial for you. I want you to learn as much as you can from my website, and it's 
No charge for the information, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Now, you can also order the supplements on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. So we're talking today about foods that detoxify your body. And, of course, Super Green is an essential source right at the top of the list by far. Inexpensive and easy. Carrots. They're rich in, again, glutathione. Glutathione helps the liver work better. Carrots are one of the most powerful detoxifying vegetables. They're loaded with something called beta carotenes and vitamin A. Now, they have cardiovascular benefits, and they can help improve your immune function. So carrots are great. You can shred them and make a salad with it. You can eat them just as they are. When I make my soups, I make a lot of soups, especially in the winter. I have a crock pot, and I'll do bean soup, split pea soup, lentil soup. Real simple. Carrots, onions, and celery. Water. I take vegetarian uh, bouillon cubes, throw in whatever it is, let's say the lentils, turn it on for six hours, you got soup. Put it in the refrigerator, eat it every day. Cheap, easy, freeze it if you want to, give it to your friends. I make soup, I give it away like crazy because it's so inexpensive, people think you're so cool. But carrots are great, you can throw, throw them into the soup. So there's a lot of foods that you can start adding to your diet. I got a bunch more. I'm actually only on the C's and gosh, I'm almost out of time here, but we got, <laughs> I got A to Z. Like I said, I'm only on the C's that are good for you. But the bottom line is they're fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. All of them are either fruits, vegetables, nuts, or seeds that help the body detoxify. And the super greens and essential source, of course, are right up there too. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us for chiropractic care, for nutrition care, for digestive problems, acid reflux, heartburn, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. Or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. And we will set you up a time to come see us. We have offices, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We accept people with all insurances. We accept people without insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. I have never seen a car damaged ever where the occupants weren't damaged. So if it was a big accident or a small accident, you have damage to your spine. I promise you. So go to the website. Stop waiting. People come in all the time and say, why didn't I do this sooner? My doctors ask the patients when they come in. You've been listening to Dr. Joe now for 10, 15, 20 years. Why have you just decided to come in now? I know, I should have done this sooner. It would have been a lot better. So don't wait, folks. Get better now. Enjoy your life. 26,960 days in the average life. You might as well enjoy them. Go to the website now. Make an appointment, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Other foods. That, are help, that help you cleanse and detoxify. Cauliflower. It's also a cruciferous vegetable. If you don't know what cruciferous are, go back to the... About actually 17 minutes ago, I talked about them. So, Cauliflower aids in the production of enzymes that flush toxins out of your body and carcinogens, and it makes it a powerful disease-fighting food. So cauliflower has just found a, a, new, a new reputation, a good reputation, because people are grinding up cauliflower and using it for rice. Low carb. You can make cauliflower pizza crust, which I love essentially zero carbs, then they're great as well. So cauliflower is great. Cilantro. Now, cilantro, the seeds are called coriander. So coriander seeds, if you plant them, become cilantro. A lot of people don't know that. So if you're using coriander or cilantro, they're both very good. This herb helps to mobilize mercury and other heavy metals and get them out of the system. Again, as a chiropractor, I want to make sure your nervous system is working properly. Heavy metals can really gunk up the mechanism. So eat cilantro as often as you can. Use the, uh, use the seeds if you can. You can grind them up, coriander, put them in salads. You can put them in soups. They're really good stuff, uh, and it helps break down those heavy metals. Collard greens. Collard greens are loaded with vitamin K. They're also high in fiber. They're good for you. If you live in the South, collard greens are a standard. Don't make them with pork or ham hocks. I know you don't want to hear that, Southern folks, but those things, even the Bible says don't eat pork. Every there are two of the three major religions that if you eat it, you can be like excommunicated, or I think that's for Christians. Uh, some of them will even kill you if you eat pork. Pigs are not clean animals, and even 2,000 years ago when Moses wrote Leviticus, pigs weren't clean, they're a lot dirtier now. So, if you're going to do collard greens, and here's the thing do it without the bacon, and it'll taste just as good. I make soups without all the meat products, they taste just as good. I make pesto without the cheese in it, tastes just as good. If you're on blood thinners. Tell your doctor that you're taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. You're going to be eating a lot of collards, a lot of greens. The doctor will then adjust, hopefully, adjust the medicine to your new lifestyle. Now, keep this lifestyle. You can't go up and down. you got to decide, this is my new lifestyle. Because you need the nutrients that are in the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, but they also may be high in vitamin K. And vitamin K can clot your blood, and if you're on blood thinners, you're kind of being counterproductive. But your doctor can modify your medication. 
the good news about this is I've had patients modify their diet. The do- and we work we work with all sorts of doctors. We refer out all the time. They refer to us. They'll modify the medication, but then eventually the body starts to heal. And many times patients will say, oh, my doctor says I don't need the medication anymore. Now, I'm not against drugs. I'm not against surgery. I'm against unnecessary use of drugs and surgery. So collard greens are great. Same thing with super greens and essential source. Check with your doctor first. Most doctors are willing to work with you. If a doctor is stubborn and isn't willing to work with you, it's okay, by the way, to find another doctor. I've got a list of doctors I can refer you to of all sorts of professions. So I have dentists, general practitioners, orthopedists, neurologists, pain management doctors, neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, doctors that do stem cell injections to help regenerate joints. I've built a very large network of doctors that I work with because not everybody can do everything. That's why so many medical doctors and orthopedists and neurologists send us their patients, and we send our patients out if we need their evaluations. So try to find doctors that understand how do you get well and stay well. That's important. Dandelions, I know you think of them as weeds, but dandelions act on the liver and it helps filter out toxins and other waste products from the blood system. Dandelion tea has been shown to help the liver break down toxins. Dandelions are very bitter. Uh, There's something called Italian broccoli or broccoli rabe, rapini it's called, Um, bitter. But bitters are very good for the liver. I remember being a child and going to Germany. Uh, My mother's parents were from Germany and they had something called Underberg. I, I don't even know if it's still around anymore, but it was a bitters. And you would take it to help your digestive system. Why? I didn't know why. I just drank it. It was bitter and it helped your digestive system. It turns out that it stimulates the liver, breaks down toxins, produces bile, squirts it into your small intestine, which helps you digest your food. So bitter foods are good. Fennel. Fennel tastes like uh, licorice if you've never had fennel. Uh, in Italian, uh, we call it fennuk. I remember my grandmother would feed us fennuk, and it was the candy because it tastes like licorice. It looks like celery, uh, tastes like licorice, and it helps uh, protects the liver from harmful chemicals and energizes your body. So it's a really good thing to add. Now, fennuk again, or fennel, we ate it raw, but now some fancy restaurants will now grill it. You have grilled fennel. Ooh, it's so fancy, so expensive. It's cheap, but you can eat it raw as well. Just make sure it's fresh. If you get an old piece and you start chewing on it, it gets real chewy and fibrous, but... Uh, great food if you like licorice. You'll, lo- you'll love fennel. Uh, flax seeds are great. Flax seeds help clean out the, the liver. Again, they're soluble and non-soluble fiber, which helps really pu- push things through the colon. It suppresses your appetite. It helps with weight loss. Grind them up. Don't take them whole. Grind them up and use them right away. Because as soon as something is ground up, like flax seeds, uh, they, they start to oxidize, which means they break down. So grind them up, whatever you're going to put it in, eat it right away because it gets slimy really fast. And I've had people go, ew, it looks like snot. Well, flax seeds do get a little slimy. Chia seeds, a little trick I do and almost every day in my house, I have a, a tea. I just throw a tea bag in some water and I'll let it sit overnight. Don't even boil the water, just let it sit. And then I'll add about maybe a cup of tea to maybe a tablespoon or two of, of, of seeds, chia seeds. And let it sit for a few hours, and it be, it becomes this globul- globulous mass. Shake it up a few times to keep it uh, in solution, and I drink it. And it doesn't. Have, it's kind of chewy, kind of slimy. It, it's okay. You can add a little stevia to it if you want to give some flavor to it. And boy, I tell you what, it gets in your colon, swells up. It's omega three fatty acids. It cleans everything out of your system. It helps with weight loss. So chia seeds are a fun little thing. And I got so much more to cover. I'll, I'll do garlic. Folks, eat more garlic. Garlic's loaded with sulfur. It supercharges uh, your immune system. It fights viruses, germs, and bacteria, one of the few things that ever can do that. And it's loaded with sulfur. And the sulfur helps regenerate your joints. So when you come in as a chiropractic patient to our offices or wherever your chiropractor is, and they're adjusting you, you want to give your body the nutrients that it needs to heal. So garlic is loaded with sulfur. And the minimum amount of nutrients you should be doing is, say it with me, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. If you're not doing that, I recommend you do it for a month. Every day, religiously, take it every day for a month. And if you don't see amazing results, don't get any more. If you don't see an increase in energy, sleeping better, a lot of things, even, even a little bit of change. How about that? I wouldn't say amazing, just a little bit of change. Stop taking it. But if you do see changes, I want you to take it every day for the rest of your life. You will be so happy with that decision. So, folks, all that information to order supplements, uh, website is there, order books, listen to radio shows, watch videos, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, because we send out a lot of good information for free on those sources as well. 
Now, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, my website, drjoesposito.com, which is Google Dr. Joe. Uh, you can make an appointment 24 hours a day. If you have questions, call us. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. We want to be your doctors. I've never seen a car accident where the where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't. So stop suffering needlessly. Stop complaining. Take the action step. It's really easy. DrJoeEsposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. We want to help you get well and stay well. Folks, thanks for listening. Thanks for telling your friends about the show. Go to the website. Listen to other shows. We'll catch you soon.